So I've been using the Elgu Mars Pro for the best part of a year now, and my main thing is printing off miniatures, painting them up, and building lots of wargaming armies, because it's just a ton of fun. Now in this video, I'll be talking to you about the reasons why I think it's a great little entry model, or anything in this sort of price range, and how it can actually be really worthwhile picking up, but some of the things to consider if you're going to be doing this hobby long term, or if you maybe want some other features that this sort of thing doesn't offer. Now the Elgu Mars Pro I picked up for about £140, it was available I think it was in a prime sale I managed to pick it up for. It's not always available to buy brand new, but you can normally buy them refurbished or second hand for around about $100 or £100. Honestly, right off the bat for that sort of price, I think it is a fantastic machine and there aren't too many limitations that I've come up against. So first up, let's talk about what's so good about this machine. And honestly, I found it really, really easy to use. I had some initial teething problems where I didn't know how to use the slicer, but once I got past this, obviously it being my first 3D printing machine, I found it really easy, literally just kind of getting my files imported, putting them through the slicer, and then sticking that USB into the machine and hitting print. I've had very few failed prints, and to be honest, most of those have been my own fault. Now, obviously, I was really concerned for printing miniatures and anything to do with like wargaming was it just wouldn't be able to cut it. It was a relatively cheap and budget machine, and my thoughts were that they would either come off and they just wouldn't look great, or the quality would be pretty poor. And I'm going to have lots of B-roll going throughout this video, so you can be the judge as to whether or not you think that quality is up there. But personally, for me, I think it looks fantastic. The prints that I got off straight away were very, very little tinkering, looked great, and I really had to do very little to get it looking even better. So I've had a blast using this. I think the quality looks pretty damned fantastic. It's not quite up there with the likes of Games Workshop and stuff like that, but I never expected it to be. But honestly, once they're painted up, I think they look pretty damned close to buying something directly from Games Workshop. On a convenient side of things, the build plate is big enough to be able to print off a decent amount of stuff. So some of these models that I've got, so these knights that I'm showing you at the moment, I can normally print off about six or seven of those in one single print. Now print time takes me, I would say, for those around about four to five hours. However, I have changed my print time, so I've made it go slower, and that way I get less failed prints. So for me, that works, and I just run them overnight. You can get it faster, and there are a lot of videos out there and tutorials about how you can get this machine or machines like it to print even faster, so that's worthwhile bearing in mind. These larger models, so these ones here by Artisan Guild, I can normally get about two or three of those in a single print, and they'll take again between four and five hours, so you know, bear that in mind. It all depends on the size of the model and how many you can stack onto that build plate. I could probably be more ambitious, but I'm always worried by overlapping them. I'm going to end up with loads of failed prints, so I choose not to. Moving away from things like just those normal Warhammer type miniatures, if we look at something like these epic scale miniatures, again, I was really, really surprised by the quality of these prints off. These are absolutely tiny little things, but like there, you can see the things like the helmets and the detail on the backpacks and the guns as well and they actually came off really, really well. Again, I wasn't expecting it to be able to pull off something so tiny. And then on the flip side of things, if you are looking at doing terrain, you can do that. So I've got here these sort of like open lock type tiles and also some of the walls to go with it. So that can also be accomplished. Another pro is the cleanup of this. So it comes with this vat, ultimately, which you fill up with your resin. Now it's got this nice little cutout in the corner, which basically means when you go to clear it all out, you pour it out and it all pools in this one direction. It just makes that emptying of the vat just a little bit easier. It's also got these screws here, which will lock it into place. So that way you don't have to worry too much about your vat moving or knocking it or anything like that. On the bottom side of things, you've got these screw feet, so that way leveling the printer is really, really easy to do. So all of that side of things, pretty fantastic. However, moving across onto some of the, I guess, the more negative points, and we'll start off with terrain. And the biggest issue with that is the build plate. So the build plate is big enough for miniatures and stuff like that, and I've not had too many issues. But if you're in this hobby to print off terrain, or if you wanna do this longer term, and you wanna be able to print off some larger models, this size of machine, in my opinion, can be quite limiting. So unless you chop things up in your slicer to make it fit and then put it all together afterwards, it can be really limiting with this size build plate. So things like terrain, for example, I can print off these open lock tiles, but anything bigger starts to become an issue. Anything too tall becomes an issue as well. So those larger scale models can be quite frustrating. Obviously for this price point, it's a pretty standard build plate, so it's not smaller than its competition, but it is worthwhile bearing in mind. If you know full well that you are going to be doing a lot of 3D printing, and this is something you are 100% wanting to do, it's worthwhile maybe exploring something with a larger build plate. I know it jumps up in budget quite a bit going for something like the Mars 3, or even something like the Elgu Saturn, and throw any recommendations you've got in the comments, 
for other people to have a look at, but sometimes it's worth it if you know full well you're going to be doing this longer term. For me, it was just an experiment to see whether or not it worked, and I'm well and truly hooked now, so I will be upgrading my machine to something with a larger build plate. But currently, this is all I've got, so any of those larger models, it can't pull them off unless you do a lot of tinkering. So I did mention earlier that obviously the cleanup side of things is relatively easy, but one of the pros is changing the FEP or the FEP, whatever you want to call it, which is basically the film that goes inside of the vat. And you have to unscrew a lot of screws. So basically you start off with unscrewing the screws to pull the vat apart, and then you unscrew the screws to pull the bit that holds the FEP in. And it's just, it's really painfully long and tedious. It's not the hardest thing in the world. If you watch one video, you'll be able to pull it off really quickly. And to be honest, the FEP seems to last for quite a long time. I can't quantify it. I just can't quite figure it out. Sometimes it lasts longer than other prints, but who knows, I get a lot of prints off on a single FEP before I have to change it, but it's really frustrating kind of unscrewing the whole thing. There's a lot of resin that kind of comes out of those cracks and stuff like that. So it's just worthwhile bearing in mind that cleanup process can be really frustrating. The build quality of the whole thing is really good, but I really hate this rubber gasket that goes around the size of it. It's just frustrating. The amount of times I've taken it off and the rubber gasket stays on or it kind of drops into the resin vat and it's like, ugh, it's just so incredibly frustrating. It's not the end of the world. It does seem to stick a little bit more. It's probably because it's just like melted to it or something. But yeah, at first it's really frustrating and I wish it was either sealed onto it or they had some other locking mechanism in place. So all in all, the Elgu Mars Pro is a fantastic machine, especially at this price point. If you can pick one up and you're looking at just getting in the hobby, if you want to do some experimenting with a 3D printer that's relatively budget friendly, then I would say it's well and truly worth giving a go. I've had an absolute blast. I have printed off hundreds and hundreds of different models. It's let me experiment to see whether or not I do enjoy the 3D printing process and I like the quality of stuff that's coming off. And now I know that I do, that I will probably be upgrading to a larger machine that will give me a little bit more flexibility. There are a few little issues with the Elgu Mars Pro, but at this price point, they are well and truly worth putting up with. And to be honest, moving up to some of the larger models or the more expensive ones, you're still gonna have issues like having to change the their power and all the screws and everything else so you don't really escape from that. Let us know in the comments your thoughts on this. Do you own the Elgu Mars Pro? Do you have one of the more recent models? And if you do, what do you like about the newer ones? Be really interested to know what 3D printers you guys are using so let us know in the comments and let us know any recommendations you've got for a larger one. At the moment I've got my eye on the Elgu Saturn just because it looks like a really good size and I'm familiar now with Elgu but you know let me know any competing ones you've got. So thanks for watching that video and if you've enjoyed it make sure you hit the like and subscribe button and come along for some more 3D printing content in the future. We'll see you soon. Bye!